to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Pray in one minute. Speak to me. Go ahead and pray. Shila Kapato Seke Pratiya. I obtain understanding of your word alongside the grace to walk in the reality of that which will be taught this morning. Change my life by your word. Don't be tired, you're praying. Thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, you lift my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3. While standing, we'll be seated shortly. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3. Second Chronicles 15 3. It says, Now for a long season Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. I shared it back at home on Sunday that there are three components that, if absent in a territory, that territory is in trouble number one the knowledge of the true god you can have gods but any territory that does not have an opportunity to encounter the true god is in trouble number two any territory that lacks teaching priests without a teaching priest there cannot be understanding and comprehension how shall they hear without a preacher and where will there be a preacher except he be sent? And then number three, without law. There has to be principles by which society is governed by. Any society that has an encounter with the true God, a teaching priest, and principles by which the citizens live by is 
a territory that will always experience the power and the grace of God. We have come to learn. We have come to rise. The Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Now, I understand this session, even though it's still a general session, but I think it's more, uh, more particular to the ministers. So, please permit my bias when you find me just talking as though I'm speaking to only ministers of the gospel. It's an honor to serve the purposes of the kingdom and the Lord will give us understanding. Yesterday, um, we looked a bit at Jesus reintroducing him as the embodiment of the entirety of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus, the son of the living God, came as the express image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. The principal channel through which God communicates and reveals himself to men is through Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the prophets, he says, hath in this last day spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He says, who being the brightness of his glory, so who is God's glory? Jesus, the brightness of his glory. And then the express image of his person. He says he upholds all things by the word of his power. This is Jesus, the brightness of the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Just take down the volume a little so that we can have. Thank you. And so we considered reintroducing Jesus. I did state yesterday that the foundation and the epicenter of the faith life is Jesus. More than breakthroughs, more than miracles. Yesterday was a general call to return back to focus that Jesus becomes the object of our pursuit, the object of our worship. Everything we do in this kingdom is derived from him. Our worship ministry is derived from him. Hallelujah. So this morning I want to now begin to really teach on the glory and um, the Lord grant us understanding in Jesus' name. Psalm 63, let's start from there. Hmm. Psalm 63, O oh God, the psalmist is praying, Thou art my God. He says, Early will I seek you, my soul thirsted for you. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. He says, to see your power and to see your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. This is a very powerful scripture. Please follow the discourse carefully. He's praying now. And the Bible gives us a peep into the content of a man's prayer. O oh Lord, verse 1, he says, Thou art my God. And then he says, For as long as it is your glory that I desire, there is timing in this pursuit. I cannot seek you every time to really be able to find your glory and your power in its full essence. I will take advantage of time. He says, My soul longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is verse 2 it says this is what i desire to see your power and your glory but then he makes a statement he says as i have seen in the sanctuary do you know the meaning of this when i went to church i saw the sick healed I saw manifestations of your power that I have not been able to capture in my life. So I want you to replicate what I saw in your house, in my life. I want to see your power and your glory. No longer just in the assembly. I want to see it in my life. 
that I do not have to stroll down into a building before I encounter your glory. I want to literally be an embodiment of that glory. That I do not have to wait for a conference and a special man of God coming from another region. And so he says, God, I want to see your power and your glory as I have seen in a sanctuary. Hallelujah. I explained to us yesterday that the glory of God the, is the, the, the Latin is the word Gloria. The Hebrew, many expressions of the word, but more particularly is from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. All of them refer to the same thing. The wealth or the weightiness is an attempt to measure the weight, the essence of a person. It was, it was a word that was used in ancient times when it had to do with um, the measurement of gold and jewelries. If you weighed it, you could see that the heavier it was, you see, that it carried that value. So glory is an attempt to describe the all-surpassing value and excellence of a thing, and in this case, God himself. Are we together now? That means for you to know the glory of a thing, you must give that thing an opportunity to display its excellence. You want to know the glory of a car? and why the car is a hundred million you have to give an opportunity to explore all the features within that car that make it greater than a car of two million or three million are we together now yes there are times you go to the market to buy material and they will tell you this material is ten thousand and this one is fifty thousand and usually you will ask them why and then they will tell you you try to tear this one you try to do this they will now begin to explain so the glory of god is an attempt to show the all surpassing power the excellence the weightiness the value that means the more you see and encounter the glory of god the more you love him the more you serve him the more you live for him because now you are aware of these values that make him god indeed when you worship him now it will not just be from a religious standpoint but you are aware this was what happened to isaiah in chapter 6 and verse 1 remember the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord and then he said he was upon a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple now you know it better than i do that in those days the priestly robe the the, the length of the train of the robe was an attempt to show just like a woman has you know how women have during their weddings and they have that thing just flowing down the train of his robe so the length determined the power the extent and the superiority of the priest and in this case he said that train that followed him filled the entire temple when he saw it verse 2 please give it to us it says above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings and they covered their feet and they did fly when he saw this next verse please the bible says that they cried holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of the whole earth is full of the whole earth full of his glory what does this mean the whole earth is a testament that he is mighty everything from creation the whole earth you don't even need to look at heaven to know his glory the earth alone is enough educator all you need to do is to look at the seas look at the plants look at mankind isn't it incredible that when you eat you don't instruct your mouth on what to do you don't talk to your systems they were designed for years from the beginning of your life till the end you never have to give them an instruction because somebody already spoke once in that word he says the earth is full of your glory that means you want to know my glory don't just long for encounters in heaven alone even if you focus in the earth there are enough things to show you that i am glorious are we together now and then isaiah broke down and said woe is me i am undone a man of unclean lips and i dwell amid the people of unclean lips and so on and so forth so the essence of god's glory please look up the prophet when we have to do with the subject of the glory of god the prophet is in the revelation the manifestation of the glory not just the awareness 
whether or not you are aware the glory of god is there is that true but then it is when the glory of god is revealed that it now profits us it is the revelation or the manifestation of the glory of god that the saints are blessed and the name of jesus is lifted i'll give you an instance the power of god is an aspect of his glory but that power does not profit you until it is put on display is that true when the sick are now healed at that point of manifestation you can now see the glory of god revealed so the whole idea of the glory of god is not just to be aware that god has attributes that make him glorious but he seeks that that glory be manifested is the word doxazo and a displaying a revealing of what was hidden for instance when a bride comes on her wedding day usually she veils herself the intention is not to remain veiled is that true her veil creates suspense there is attraction by that veiling of herself you you look forward to seeing how she's dressed but a time must come in that ceremony when they tell the man you can now unveil your bride when he unveils the bride they will ask him is she the one is ah, absolutely this is her and then he smiles and everybody rejoices they now appreciate the splendor and the beauty remember before she put on that veil she took out time to dress to look beautiful are we together now so there is an unveiling of the glory of god that creation is waiting for now they have a right to doubt god because our assignment is to stop them from doubting god and until there is a manifestation of that glory in and through our lives we cannot blame creation for taking god like a joker the bible says in romans chapter 8 reading from verse 18 i reckon the word reckon means i come to terms with the fact that our sufferings of this present time it says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be every time you see glory you see it with revelation our sufferings the momentary constraints that we go through is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god another version says creation is waiting for god to reveal those who his sons truly are so every time we talk about the glory of god the power the wisdom the excellence it has to be revealed ephesians chapter 3 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus and he was teaching them the precepts he was teaching them doctrine and when you get to verse 3 paul ephesians 3 and we'll read from verse 3 he says how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery so what he was teaching them he was giving them the source of his information that do not find it strange when you see that i did not walk with jesus as one of the disciples and yet i am communicating deep mysteries that are even so difficult for the apostles who were with him he says how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as i wrote a four words verse four it says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ and then he gives it an information he says which in other ages was not made to the sons of men but now is revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit go to nine the emphasis is verse 10 but let's go to verse 9 it says to make all men see this is powerful paul is saying part of that equipping that was given to me is a grace that can make any man see what i'm saying regardless educational background there is a grace that makes all men see and if you are a preacher you must obtain grace from god to carry this grace otherwise you are going to be teaching for a long time and there will not be understanding there is a grace that makes all men see please keep the scripture remember jesus was walking god bless you let's celebrate venerable thank you remember there was two men the bible tells us that two men were walking the streets of emmaus are we students of scripture and then the bible says jesus was walking in the midst of them they had proximity with the truth but they were not transformed by it 
then when he sat at table with them the bible says he broke the bread and their eyes were opened and then he left them so just because you are around the truth does not mean you understand it no he said understandest what thou readest that's what he told the Ethiopian Enoch so to make all men see listen what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Christ please read verse 10 if you're a Christian ready one to read to the intent what does that mean hold on that means everything I was given is for this cause to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the church the body of christ the manifold many-sided wisdom of god just stop there this is an aspect of his glory he wants this aspect of his glory called his wisdom to be revealed the wisdom that dumbfounds the wisdom of principalities and powers and he wants it to be made known by the church that means any other entity that tries to reveal the glory of god will not do a good job it is only the church that has the ability to reveal the glory of god in a way that satisfies the heart of the father this is why he built his church remember we discussed it yesterday who do men say that i the son of god am? and he said you are elijah you are this he says um peter speaking he says thou art christ the son of the living god and he said blessed be thou peter son of jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father in heaven and he says thou art peter and upon this rock i will build so the church was not invented the church did not just appear the church was built and it was built with such a formidable architecture listen carefully please that the architecture of the church was built with such dexterity that if allowed if we go back to the pattern of that architect he said the church will be so formidable the gate of hell that means the test of the strength of the church is how powerless the gate of hell should be in the presence of the church but as we see right now we need to go back to that architecture because something is grossly wrong the gates of hell seem to have a free cause regardless all that the bible tells us god is regardless all the bible tells us jesus has done i will build my church and i will build it such that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it Please write this down. God is a God of patterns. God is a God of patterns. We're discussing issues of the glory now. God is a God of patterns. What is a pattern? Please look up. A pattern is a blueprint. A pattern is a formula. A pattern is a modus operandi a model now the way God works is that he does not do the same thing twice the first time God does anything he builds it and leaves a pattern for its reproduction is that true so for instance God made Adam man dark earth and then out of that man he pulled out a woman is that true and then in that process he built a pattern that we have known today to be reproduction or procreation that means every time you want more men you don't need to start crying and say God we need more men all you need to do is find the pattern allocated for the continuity of that process please follow carefully when God wanted to bring agriculture and expand vegetation across the earth what he did was he planted the first trees by himself but he created a pattern that in every tree there was a seed in it is that true and that every seed carries trees that we do not even know so every time you want more trees what do you do you subscribe to the pattern that brings for increase are we together now this is very powerful and then when it had to do with the atmosphere and the environment he created patterns today we know those patterns in our civilization as circles so there is the 
what do we call it there is the rainy season and the dry season circles they make for continuity is that true there is bi biology and agriculture and physics and chemistry they have all kinds of circles how things recycle themselves to start afresh again these are all divine patterns please listen follow very carefully that means that when you want to experience the glory of God it is not only God that you will seek you will have to understand his patterns every manifestation of God's glory has a spiritual pattern allocated to it if you want to see salvation there is a pattern allocated for it what is the pattern for salvation Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 is the biblical pattern for the administration of this dimension of God's glory called his salvation that if it is salvation the first thing that starts is the word there must be the presence of the word for salvation to happen salvation does not happen just by emotions it is at the instance of the word and that that word must find expression in your heart and it must find expression in your lips is that true and it must be a word of faith or the word of faith next verse it says if you confess this is the biblical pattern for salvation if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that he was raised up from the dead for your justification it says thou shalt be saved for the pattern is in verse 10 with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that means I can I can know you are saved if I see the pattern that you followed is that true because of adherence to this spiritual pattern today there are about six 2.6 billion people who have subscribed to the government of jesus christ regardless church regardless crusade ground some people obey this pattern by the sea others obey this pattern in church others obey this pattern in their bedroom regardless location the moment the pattern was adhered to that dimension of glory was revealed please follow me very carefully therefore the patterns of God are forerunners of his glory the patterns of God forerun his glory please understand this the patterns of God forerun his glory every time you see an absence of the manifestation of the glory of God in the life of an individual or in the life of a church a pastor a people the absence of that glory is a report card is telling you that there is no thorough comprehension of the spiritual pattern allocated for the manifestation of that glory amazing and because the glory of God is multifaceted you can find the pattern for an area and not find the pattern for another area It's the reason why we continue to be students in the school of the spirit searching for the spiritual patterns by the help of the holy ghost that will help us represent the glory of god in its fullness listen i can find the spiritual pattern that reveals the glory of god as divine health in my life and so when you see my life you see my life free of sickness free of infirmity but i may do so bad in finances because the pattern allocated for my health will not automatically make for my finances i would have to go and learn by the spirit you see why he gave us the holy spirit thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done The father would not trust your getting into this revelation without the holy spirit so he left us the holy spirit to guide us this is what jesus taught us he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you into all truth that means you can have some and not have others his assignment is to guide you into the entire body of truth are we still together this morning so please write this down that the patterns of God are forerunners forerunners to the manifestation of his glory 
you want to see the glory of God in your life, haven't understood what the glory of God is, the multifaceted expression of everything that makes God God is His glory. Exodus chapter 25. Now, the way the Bible works is that, as you know, um, God works in types and shadows, similitudes, adumbrations, we call them. That means that patterns are acted out and in those stories or in those scenarios we can fish out the patterns and now begin to use them for instance how many of you know that if i want to reproduce this same church in lagos all i need is what the pattern the architectural plan is that true any architect who is a true architect accredited should be able to produce with 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 digital precision this auditorium so if i want 10 of this auditorium i don't need to carry this building moving around i don't even need to just snap it is possible for the architect to never be here physically and yet reproduce it with uncanny mastery because he has a pattern that means what we should be crying for is not really the manifestation of god's glory the manifestation of god's glory is an effect what we should really cry for is to know God and to understand his patterns. So the Bible says, let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. It says, let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. Are we together? Exodus chapter 25. This was the building of the tabernacle. Let's look at verse 9. Moses is now instructed to replicate the tabernacle in heaven. And whilst Moses was caught up, he had the privilege to see, to peep into the heavenly tabernacle. Now, he's reproducing what he saw in heaven. But it did not just happen just by his sight. Here's what he said. According to all that I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. My goodness. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Do you know what this is? God wants to tabernacle or he wanted to tabernacle with the people. But he said, you must reproduce the environment of the throne room within that space. So that I can be comfortable to be with you and not even know the difference whether I am in the throne room or with you. Now, we are not here to glorify Satan, but let me teach you something that will bless you. The devil can never have access to any aspect of your life until through ignorance or deception he forces you to create something in your life that is a simulation of the current environment of the spirit that comes to you watch this if the, if a native doctor gives you a charm now you just believe that he conjured all kinds of things it looks like just a small substance he gave you what he gave you was the habitation of the spirit whose assistance you are looking for now he gives you that thing and he says take it home drop it anywhere when you drop it there you now that pattern you have created starts attracting the spirit component are you getting the point now that spirit comes and he's comfortable to live in your habitation this is the whole idea of idol worship to simulate a pattern that makes whatever dimension of that spirit comfortable now god <laughs> god is giving moses an instruction moses you want my presence you want my glory leave the issue of glory let me teach you how this thing works in the realm of the spirit now i'm going to give you an idea of how the tabernacle in heaven looks like be diligent look at how he kept reminding him if it's my glory you want i must check my patterns first now he says according to all that i show you after the pattern of the tabernacle he says even so shall you make it let's go to verse 40. he says and they make verse 40 25 verse 40 not 10 40 yes it says and look can you imagine he now comes the second time to insist and look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown you on the mount that means moses don't invent your formula you will not get me that way everything you saw reproduce it exactly 
Now go to chapter 40 and verse 16. Chapter 40 and verse 16. Same Exodus. The Bible says, Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Verse 33. Same scripture. 33. The Bible says, God kept watching. He kept supervising. Moses is getting to the final stage of the construction now. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar. And he set up the hanging of the court gate. Full stop. Then the Bible says, so Moses finished the work according to pattern. As a result, 34. The Bible says, then a cloud. Now that the pattern was kept, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord came and did what? Filled the tabernacle. Next verse. It says, and Moses was not even able to enter into the tent of the congregation because of the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, and when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward all, in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night in the sight manifestation now it didn't happen in the realm of the spirit everybody saw it in the sight of all the house of israel throughout all their journeys provided the pattern was kept they kept seeing the glory provided the patterns were kept they kept seeing the glory the patterns of god forerun his glory the patterns of God forerun his glory. A tailor can be given a measurement without seeing the man of God. Let's assume you want to sew a wonderful garment to give Bishop and his dear wife. You do not need to even have the tailor see them. The tailor seeing them is an added advantage. But whether or not he sees them, all you need to do is be accurate enough to get their measurements and you can give the tailor and within days the man prepares a nice dress and literally bishop can wear it without testing it and come on stage if the tailor was that good in keeping the pattern the pattern spiritual patterns are so powerful they control the manifestation of the glory of god behind the strange dimensions of the exploits of the saints a compliance to spiritual patterns there is a spiritual pattern that governs the manifestation of the anointing the anointing does not just happen because the Holy Ghost is there there is a spiritual pattern that governs influence and access people do not just listen to you because you have something to say there is a spiritual pattern that governs the continuity of your spiritual fire Are we blessed? So if you want to see the manifestation of the glory of God, we must, like students of scripture, return to the Bible and find out. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest. There is a pattern that turns a disciple to an apostle. Jesus did not just come and say, I hereby make you apostles. No. As powerful as he is, he subjected them through this methodical system of growth. Everyone priest here, everyone reverend, venerable, and even our bishops here would tell you, there was a pattern is that true you cannot become a bishop in the anglican communion for instance without knowing certain things no matter how ignorant you are 
there is a there is a necessary pattern that must be followed now i tell you the reason why many people in the body of christ and in church and in ministry do not experience the glory of god it's not because god is hoarding his glory no do you know that in john 17 and verse 1 let's read john 17 verse 1 the only way the father is glorified is when the sons are glorified jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come please read with me glorify thy son why that thy son may glorify thee this is a principle of shared dominion theologically speaking no object glorifies itself you invest your glory in another and the excellence of that displays how you get your glory so the father cannot glorify himself he invests his glory in the son in the excellence of the son is the glory of the father the son cannot glorify himself so he invests his glory in the church so that the church in partnership with the holy spirit brings glory to the son are you seeing how it works now the church cannot glorify themselves so our dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers is how the church is glorified so creation dominion over creation is how the church is glorified as the church is glorified the son is glorified as the son is glorified the father is glorified you know how powerful the sun is by looking at the moon the moon has no light on its own but it depends on the sun and there are times you can see the moon halfway it does not mean the sun lost its power is that the moon was shifting away from the sun it's not the fault of the sun there are times that the moon comes close to the sun and you see the brilliance it can turn night to almost look like day so if my life and your life does not capture the full essence of the glory of god it does not mean god stopped being glorious if taraba state and jalingo does not reflect the glory of god all wise we must go back to investigate what kind of patterns are we subscribing to because it is through the patterns listen I learned this years ago because I said there has to be a way to explain these gaps in our Christian experience I carried my Bible and I read my Bible I've had the honor and the privilege of reading this book that I so love with my life from cover to cover many times and I saw the miracles the wonders I was taught this in church again but we never could see it again I saw 3,000 souls saved in one crusade that was unplanned for and yet we preach and at the end of our preaching with lots of obvious sinners only one person perhaps just strolls carelessly and it's clear the person did not even know what he was doing something is wrong with the pattern how about praying for the sick imagine how passionate we pray for the sick in the name of jesus may the lord touch you and you can see that the sick people have faith they are coming to your vicinity is already enough that they have faith but nothing happens and we leave disappointed i hope you don't feel insulted we're challenging ourselves how about the blessings of the lord oh we speak and we decree and declare which is truth that the blessings of abraham have become us we declare that we are the seed of abraham and it is true because galatians 3 chapter 29 or chapter 3 and verse 29 says it he says if ye be christ then are ye heirs is that true yes it says abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise and yet you find out that a territory can be so ravaged by lack and poverty including those who stand as priests How about the prevalence of decadence in the society have you seen respectfully speaking that the more churches we have in the territory the more untouched the territory is at all whether it is the moral fabric the spiritual conviction 
just pick a believer at random and interview that believer and you'll be left in tears at the end of your discussion So we need to re-examine the patterns. The problem is not that we are bad. The problem is that the pattern is wrong. No matter how sincere I am now, if you ask me to prepare a meal, what do you love in Jalingo? Choir. Don't embarrass me now. What do you love to eat in Jalingo? Don't embarrass your people. They will query you later on. Huh? Plantain. He said a label. I hope I hope it's correct. Let's well let's use up. They are looking at you and saying, Are you speaking on behalf of yourself or on behalf of all of us? Okay, let's use rice for instance. If you are to cook jollof rice, how many of you know that sincerity does not produce jollof rice? I can be a sincere man of God. In fact, I can even have the ingredients given to me free of charge, but that does not guarantee. Then there are others. If you ask me to cook for two or three people, I may get it right. But now you ask me to cook for everybody. This one requires a level of mastery. I can manage and conjure whatever and close the pot for two or three people. But cooking for a crowd, you cannot be an amateur to do that. There are some women here. If we say we want to eat now, you will just tell us, give us three to four or five hours. And we can guarantee that a meal will come that will glorify Jesus here. Are we together? That means there is a possibility that even though we are well-meaning and sincere people, love God with all our hearts, ministry may not work, even though we are sincere. You don't have to be fake to suffer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You can be as sincere. The disciples of Jesus were sincere people. When he went up the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw this epileptic patient and they came as disciples, students of Jesus. They now tried to pray, to do what they were taught. And they were utterly disappointed. They were angry and when Jesus came, they said, what is this? Why couldn't we do this? Can I tell you this? There is nothing more frustrating than loving Jesus sincerely, knowing you are true and your heart is pure, and yet not able to reveal the glory of God to the extent that brings glory to Jesus. Many years ago, I prayed for the sick and nothing happened. I've loved Jesus my entire life. I ministered to people and nothing happened. I read my Bible and I said something has to be wrong. I began to read stories of men and women in scripture and even in modern history the bible archives them in hebrews 11 time will fail me it says to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life and i knew that something was wrong and i did not want to live in a lie making a lot of assumptions writing books about a concept that has not yet become a reality please follow me and in my desperation and my hunger one day i had a vision in that vision i saw a giant door very big door that looked like an ancient gate and then it was zoomed towards me and i found out that that door was made of many smaller doors the big door had many smaller doors and they were opening and closing and every time they opened light would just come like flashing a touch light light would come out of those smaller doors and i noticed that on every of the small door there was one scripture that was written god was about to introduce me to something and then the door would open and light would come out of it and the holy spirit began to speak to me and he said, these doors represent possibilities in the kingdom. The light that comes from it is the grace to defend every truth that you see on that door. That means every truth in this kingdom, if you really find it, there is a grace to defend its validity here and now. When T.L. Osborne found it, he proved it. When Kenneth Hagin found it, 
he proved it when john knox found it he proved it the patriarchs when they found it they proved it today we claim to have found it and so we gather people like the fig tree and they come say now you found it and we round up by saying may the grace of our lord jesus christ very implicating scripture do you know what the grace of our lord jesus christ is then we even say the love of god and we know that the character of love is that it gives without restraint then we even say the fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest with you as you go with your trouble goodbye we recite this every week we recite this then we even add amen you know what amen is amen is let it be so let it manifest as preordained that's what amen means and so i made up my mind that i would have to become like a spiritual archaeologist to now begin to search these truths because if we cannot present the glory of god in its entirety we are going to lose a whole generation i assure you today there are options atheists came out and they said we, be, we don't believe in any god and they have created a, a semblance of evidences that we are yet to counter other religions have come to say listen this your jesus you are speaking about is just fanatism there are many gods and they've demonstrated that result with their life a herbalist is there sitting in one dark room and we keep laughing at them and telling members don't go to any herbalist and yet the last time the man went to the herbalist he bought a car in one month he went to the herbalist his wife got pregnant in two weeks he went to the herbalist he won an election and then he returns back to church and said just leave them and stay with jesus and they say i don't have a problem with jesus but where is the evidence that shows he's alive Are we together? Yes. I know you may think that you will never dapple your hands into evil until the day life pushes you and you try this in quote, the Jesus option and nothing happens and you are watching your wife dying and they tell you she has one more week to die. This is why many testimonies in church did not come from church. People only bring them to church because they don't want trouble with pastors. They know where the testimonies came from. Sorry, oh, you asked me to come and speak to you. That is why members have their Bibles, they have charms, they have some other books, they have some other references. And they operate them at random. The most important thing is let me give God glory when it is done. Please take seriously what I'm saying, including our congregations. I've had the honor and the privilege by reason of ministry to pray for people sincerely. And you cannot imagine. Results are powerful. So everybody continues to go down financially. And someone is watching another person bribe his way into blessings. Or into into uh, uh, wealth and abundance and yet you are saying listen you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and step into the blessing of the Lord and now the person is obeying you as a pastor his wife is suffering the children are suffering he's the firstborn among 12 families sooner or later they will love him and they'll say while you are doing your church thing there this is the reason why when we shout praise the lord people say hallelujah when we say you are blessed they say amen but even us we know they are mocking us because there is a track record of lack of results and evidence to this spiritual thing we do ah may god restore his glory in the name of jesus christ look at jesus who came as the manifestation of the glory of god a woman had one encounter with him by the well she was the impact was so powerful she could not keep quiet she ran as a prostitute nobody asked her to be an evangelist why is evangelism hard today because we are not sure of what we are preaching evangelism was never supposed to be difficult in the presence of results 
How do rumors spread? Rumors spread easily. Do you beg people to spread rumors? Do you beg people to spread bad news? As many as we are in this country, if a prominent man dies in less than 10 minutes, the whole Nigeria knows. How come the gospel has not gone that far? No evidence. No evidence. No evidence. A man will be in his bedroom discussing with the wife and one person will hear and in 30 minutes the whole Nigeria has had a discussion and yet the gospel that is preached every Sunday openly there are people who have not heard and are not interested and yet churches keep expanding conferences are being organized every week and every time I hope you understand that I'm saying this out of love it's not, a, it's not, it's not to be sarcastic but it's to call us 21st century end time ministry will need evidences if you really want to manifest the glory of God. I, I, we are diagnosing the problem and I'm showing you the extent of the damage that not understanding spiritual patterns is causing. We may not see it until your child gets up one day and says, you know what? I have watched you. Do you know that many lawless people in our nation and our environment today they were children of pastors? Are you aware of that? You look at the American community, respectfully speaking. Many of the lawless people who are the principal promoters of evil and darkness, most of them started from church. But church disappointed them. There are many young people who will tell you right now as I'm watching, it's only my body that is here, my mind is no longer in church. But look at Jesus. He went up the mountain, people followed him. For three days, they refused to go home. He went by the sea, they followed him. To tell you it's not just about Jesus alone. Even the woman herself. She went and said, come see a man. And they, they knew this woman. And they saw the sudden transformation. They said, no, 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 no. We don't believe that Jesus, but we believe you. Let's go. And they came when they sat with Jesus. One service was enough for their transformation. And today we have members 10 years and by the 11th year, you find out they were not born again. It's at the 11th year, they will come out for an altar call. When a guest minister comes somewhere, do you know how embarrassing it is to be that a man has been in the atmosphere, he was chairman of building committee, he was chairman of this, prayer and fasting he attended, is until someone now comes to preach. Then he now comes out. Are we blessed? I tell you what the diagnosis is. We desire the glory. The average believer knows or is aware of all the possibilities in scripture. If I ask you now, does God heal? Please help me. Does God heal? Does God bless? Does he lift men? Can he restore? Does God give speed? Can he give a barren woman children? Can he take the poor and put him in the, in the palace? Can he take someone from nothing and make him a great man? Question. You are aware. You are not in doubt. But why is it not happening? It is painful to know what should be and not have it manifest. It's like knowing every restaurant is open. You know where the restaurants are, but you are still hungry. You can even pass close to the restaurant. You know there's food in this restaurant now. They've told you food is ready. They wrote it clearly. And yet you are dying of hunger. In one minute while you are looking at me, can you just talk to the Lord before we continue? Lord, I am tired of Christianity as usual. There has to be something different in this conference. There has to be an encounter that manifests your glory. Your glory in a new dimension, in a way that compels all and sundry to glorify Jesus. It says, let your light so shine, not before things, before men. He desires to see your light shine before men. It says that they may glorify your Father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Are we blessed? Exodus chapter 33. We'll find somewhere to pray. Exodus 33 and verse 13. We're following a pattern now. Moses is about to encounter the glory of God in a unique way. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way. Many people know the scripture that Moses said, show me your glory. But that was not the first thing he asked for. The first thing Moses asked was, show me your way. Why? That I may know thee. Show me your ways. He made his ways known to Moses, but he did not just come. Moses requested and said, I know that your ways are connected to your glory. If I do not know your ways and I do not know you, when Jesus came, here was his manifesto. He says, I am the way. There is Jesus the way. Until you find the way, you cannot find the truth. And until you find the truth, you cannot find the life. The protocol is Jesus the way. I am the pattern that leads you into that reality. When you find that reality, then you can come into experience. I am the way. I am the way. It says, show me thy way that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Uh -huh. Let's read on. It says, and he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. 15. And he said unto him, if your presence goes not with me, carry us not from hence. I can preach all night here. A man who can leave ministry to preserve the presence of God. A man who is saying, look, let them say I failed in my assignment, but if I have your presence, I am satisfied. As for me, I believe in advancement, but I rather be purported to be in delay, provided your presence is with me. Look at this. This is already an instruction because many people would give up the presence of God a thousand times to continue ministry. For wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in your sight? Is it not that in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I and thy people? That means what will be the difference? If I go without your presence, I'm just going to be an ordinary preacher. Wasting my time with jealousy and envy. Fighting people not because I am bad, but because I'm frustrated at my lack of results. Every time you do not have results, the effect is you will be angry at those having the results. And you will look for an excuse, not because you hate them. You have to manage the pain in your heart from your own frustration. The major reason why pastors fight... It's not because they are bad. Everybody who is fighting anything likes that thing he's fighting. But the truth is that it is not through their hands. The scribes and the Pharisees did not hate miracles. They hated the fact that it did not happen through them. And they said, Madam, don't come on Sunday. And Jesus said, hypocrites. If your donkey falls inside the well on Sunday, you know that your donkey has a monetary value. You will enter that well and bring it out. Nicodemus exposed all of them. He came to Jesus by night. He said, I'm not ready to be a hypocrite. Rabbi, we know. Forget all the nonsense we are saying in the day. We know that you are a man sent from God. He says, for no man can do these things except God be with him. That means all our talk in the day is just we already know the truth. Hmm. Are we following? Let's read on. No, not, not John 3 now, please. Go back to Exodus. Exodus, our text 33. Exodus 33. We're reading now from verse, uh, I think, 16. All right? Let's go to 17 now. 17 and the lord said unto moses i will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight and i know thee by name next verse and he said i beseech you show me your glory you don't ask for the glory first you ask for the ways the patterns 
when the patterns are delivered you can now say show me your glory and then he allowed his goodness to pass by him and he said moses you can't see the entirety of my glory and leave but here's what will happen i will keep you at the cleft of the rock and i will close your eyes so that when i pass i will give you an opportunity to see a dimension of my glory everybody say divine patterns listen if you learn what i share with you today in a matter of days and some of you weeks your life your christian experience and your ministry will be a wonder first to you believe me and then to everyone around you people will look at you and say when did saul also become one of the prophets what happened to you and you will say i came for this peniel conference you know that peniel was an encounter isn't it jacob before jacob's encounter it was only god of abraham and god of isaac we didn't know god of jacob a man used his life to introduce us to that dimension of god's glory it was so powerful god recommended him as the pattern to follow if you want encounters you see the way scripture works is that god captures his patterns and personifies them in men so that every time you are searching for the pattern and you cannot find it he makes the journey easy for you by referring you to an individual so if you want to know what it means to walk in the blessings of the lord and you don't understand this whole greek and hebrew that paul is talking he refers you according to isaiah 51 from verse 2 to abraham and sarah he says look unto abraham verse 2 and unto sarah that bore you understudy his life how i called him alone how i blessed him and how i increased him he is my portrait of what it means to be blessed in the kingdom when you want to study the prayer ministry and your prayer ministry is going down prevailing prayer that can subdue territories the bible refers you to a strange prophet called elijah it says elijah was a man of like passions but there was a way he prayed earnestly for three and a half years he locked the heavens and opened it again are we together when you want to study favor for instance you have not seen favor in your life the bible personifies favor in a woman called esther and he says to study her how a village woman from shushan rose to become king alongside ahasuerus over 127 provinces killed a man and yet never held a knife in her hand favor when you want to study deliverance he refers you to israel in egypt how that for 430 years a people were in captivity are we together now and then in one night they came out triumphantly with gold with all kinds of blessings the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning, so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. So Moses asked for the ways of God, and the ways of God ushered him to the glory of God. Apostle, I'm a great priest, I love the Lord but i keep having it in my dreams that there is more god wants to do with me that dream will remain a dream in the realm of the spirit until the holy ghost helps you to capture the pattern that brings that grace you want church growth you are trusting god for numerical increase it does not just happen by handing handbills i assure you and i guarantee you human beings are more intelligent than that there's nothing wrong in giving handbills but it's more than handbills find out what jesus did that made a crowd to climb the mountain you know how hard it is to climb a mountain yet they climb and they sat down there for three hours members come and after 30 minutes they are yawning and angry and they go out and after service they sit behind the boots to gossip for three hours so it was not that they were in a hurry they had time 
can i tell you this every church represented here and every man of god you can have your auditoriums filled with hungry people who are coming to be saved hungry people who are coming to be changed there are enough unbelievers there are enough non-transformed believers to fill every cathedral without any sense of competition whatsoever but you must know what it takes for there is a pattern apostle i want church growth the pattern is and if i be lifted up from the earth the moment you promote yourself and it's all about you he only draws men when he's lifted up i want to prosper i'm tired of failure and hardship it's not by hustling and hitting left and right the bible clearly tells you except the lord built a house it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen can watch but in vain he says it is vain to wake up early to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he says but he can give his beloved sleep and so he now begins to teach you there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty he's showing you the ways of god a diligent hand shall be made fat he's showing you he now begins to show you the excellency of wisdom in producing your result you find out that you are a leader and it looks like your leadership is failing politically ministerially he tells you the deficiency is not just the presence of demons you need wisdom for it says wisdom is the principal thing is it in your bible it says get wisdom and in all your getting get understanding it says exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her speaking about wisdom it says doth not wisdom cry by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness when you want to know what it means to be successful at a territorial level you don't go to a herbalist you go to job job is the man that personifies what it means to be lifted by god job chapter 29 you read the first four verses job gave us the secret are we seeing divine patterns now it says job 29 job not john job 29 and verse 1 moreover job continued his parables i'm just showing you some patterns before we just iron things out and pray all that i were in the months past in the days when god preserved me uh-huh it says when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness keep that scripture please verse 3 everybody look at it carefully this was the secret behind job's expression there were two kinds of light that made job rise number one was the light that shined on his head the second was the light that shined in his feet the light that shined in his head is for revelation and illumination the one that shined in his feet was for direction you don't just need direction alone you need illumination illumination elihu lamented and he said in chapter 32 i think and verse 8 or so of job he says there is a spirit in man and the breath ruach the greek word pneuma the breath the spirit the essence makes men it can give them understanding the fortitude to comprehend hmm. hallelujah are we together yes apostle my life is slow in ministry and in destiny i'm not making progress and yet you read your bible you see that speed is a possibility is that true that the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel so there is a, there is speed but what is the secret to speed is in the bible have you not heard have you not known the everlasting god the lord the maker the creator of the ends of the earth he is not weary there is no searching of his understanding then it tells you that even the young men will be weary the youth will faint he says but they that wait upon the lord so the secret of speed is to wait upon the lord he says you will renew your strength you will mount up with wings as the eagles you will run and not be tired you will walk and not faint
apostle i desire the power of god in my life we're talking about the glory of the latter house i desire the wine the oil for the next season let me tell you how it works the wedding in cana was the first miracle of jesus and the bible says this beginning of miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested forth his glory what was the wedding about it was about a feast one two it was about a wine that finished it was limited that was the old wine the wine finished number three it was about sensitivity a few people within that feast said something is wrong with the formation of this feast jesus is in the feast but he's not the epicenter of the feast there are other rulers and they dumped jesus somewhere in the assembly and they came to jesus and jesus said no 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 you people go and do your thing since i am not the epicenter of what you are doing and they went to mary and mary said whatsoever he tells you to do do let me show you how the wine for the end time is formed it first starts with water you want to encounter genuine anointing it will not start with seeking anointing it will start with the word of god it first started with water the water cleanses the water purifies the water gives you understanding while you are engaging the water it will suddenly start turning to wine and by the time you get to the rulers the place of visibility you you started with the word but by the time you arrived at your place of influence you are holding wine the finest of them and the rulers tasted of that wine and said, why did you hide this i didn't hide it it only took time to make it Are we together? I pray that God is speaking to us this morning. Now, let me give us one key to manifesting the glory. Just one and then we'll pray and we'll take the other one or the other two in the evening. The first key to manifesting the glory of God is the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting you want to see the glory of god manifest in your life you will have to engage please pay attention the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting john chapter 12 from verse 23 jesus please look up jesus revealed something very powerful here and here's what he says and jesus answered them saying the hour has come or is come that the son of man should be glorified so he's talking about glory the very next verse he says verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die it abides alone but if it does die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And remember John 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Herein is our Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit. So God is glorified when we bear much fruit. And that much fruit happens at the instance of death. Please listen to me there is a relationship between death and glory this may not be a very comfortable sermon for many ministers but there is a relationship if it is the glory of god you want to host superior dimensions of his power and his grace grace over territories and nations it will happen at the instance of death what is death death is a principle that separates you from the impulses of this life a dead man is not dead a dead man is only separated do we agree with that when you pinch a dead man he has lost the ability to be connected with the impulses that come with this realm even though he's alive but he's alive in another realm no longer this realm set fire on a dead man he has no reaction to it slap a dead man talk about him slander a dead man it makes nothing 
the moment you are still connected to the impulses of this life that produce jealousy and produce these things is because you are still alive glory cannot be revealed let me tell you this only dead vessels can carry god the weight of god is heavy you can't carry him when you are alive you have to be dead to self dead to the flesh and the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting many believers only know prayer as a platform for receiving things the primary assignment of prayer is not for receiving receiving is a later part of it the primary assignment of prayer is for transformation are we together until we die to the impulses of this life that come with a plethora of pride please give us luke chapter 9 from verse 28 watch this luke chapter 9 we're about to pray and it came to pass jesus now we're reading from verse 28 it came to pass about eight days after these sayings he took peter and john and james and went up into a mountain to pray so jesus went to pray what happened to jesus when he prayed let's read together in concert one to read and as he prayed uh-huh the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering this is the first assignment of prayer prayer is not just to receive things prayer is to change you prayer is the system that evolves you into the version of you that can host the glory of god this version of you may not be able to carry the miracle working power even though potentially that in christ you have access to these realities but walking in the manifestation of it will require you to be formed there is a version of you 30 same scripture let's hurry up and behold there talked with him two men moses and elijah as a result of the manifestation the bible says who appeared in that glory and spake of his decease which should accomplish at jerusalem 32 but peter and they that were with him my goodness my god they were with him and yet they were unconnected to it but thank god for the compassion of jesus when they were awake they saw his glory and the two men that stood by him 33 and it came to pass as they departed from him Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is a good thing for us to be here. Let us make tabernacles. You see how they were thinking? They were thinking from a realm of carnality because they were still connected. Let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he thus speak, there came a cloud. And that cloud overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. They feared as they entered into the cloud. Uh huh. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Look at what happened. Oh, that's that's all right that jesus went to pray and he was more focused on his transformation many times when we go to pray we spend hours god give me this i've told you this god people are mocking me and god says the reason why you are feeling the mockery is because you are still alive let prayer transform you and you will find out that you will not even be bothered again many of the impulses that distract us in ministry are proof that we are still connected to the mundane things in this realm you didn't appreciate me and that becomes an enmity of 10 years you didn't appreciate my sermon petty and silly and sometimes even fleshly and carnal things can i tell you this when you take out time to pray for the purpose of transformation something begins to happen to you the hallmark of transformation is not knowledge is love the love of god begins to grow in you and you can look at people and still love even when they are unlovable 
because something has happened to you by the spirit everyone say prayer prayer with fasting that's true many people pray but they do not fast have you have you noticed that when you are not in an organized and conscious fast you can stay a whole day and not eat and you may not even be hungry sometimes even water but you declare fast and you wake up by 8 and by 11 anything you see around you sweets orange even food for children there is something that is pushing you there i tell you the reason why because there is power when people consecrate themselves when you give God dedicated attention in fasting and prayer intimacy is built when you invest time ask any husband and any wife imagine a husband and a wife that sees themselves only once a year just comes eat her food and is on his way going that marriage will almost be on the way to crashing are we blessed yes. to spend time in prayer Lord I love you and you are praying praying out every flesh take away those tendencies Lord don't allow me rise in the presence of people before I disgrace myself search my heart oh God this is not condemnation this is God purifying you. He says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, of clay and of, of wood. He says, some vessels are unto honor. Some vessels are not are unto dishonor. If a man will purge himself, the presence of God. When you set yourself to pray, you are rolling left, right and center in his presence. You are not going there as a man of God. You are saying, Lord, I am here. I am here for you. Here. There are great responsibilities. There are sermons that must come out of my encounter. Lord, if you do not help me and show me mercy, I do not have what to say. And whilst you are there, suddenly that glory, you are immersed in that glory. Like, like you know how you marinate meat, women. You just pour oil or you pour something and just marinate it and keep it there for a long time. The goal is that everything penetrates through. Is that true? To the very fabric of that meat. Hmm. Do you know there is power in staying with God? Servants of the living God, let's obtain grace to practice this. Ministry can be an idol. It can distract you. Especially for some of us that God has helped to be a bit busy. Travel from here to here. MOG. Ministry expansion. Your relationship keeps dying while doors keep opening. I know many, 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 many people. Let me tell you this. I confess to you and I know that many of us are like that. I live an extremely busy schedule. And sometimes I almost want to cry because I, I miss those times when I had the luxury of time where I can lock myself. Now I cannot lock myself. I respond to 800 to 1,000 text messages every day. And yet, there are some of you here, I, when I was being graciously ushered, I saw some of you looking at me and I could sense admiration. Oh God, let me be like that. Let me give you an advice. Let me give you an honest advice. Let me give you... This is, this is a, a minister's conference. I won't say this in the evening. But let me tell you this. If you do not love him and his presence more than ministry, you will not last. Not this end time. Are we together? I love him more. You've heard me say it. I will cancel ministry a thousand times. Some of us, the only time we pray is Saturday night. Quickly rounding up. Father, thank you because on Sunday I'm going to stand as you are brushing the notes. No. You see, let me tell you something with God. 
when you see marriage am i wasting your time we're about to pray when you see a married couple who are truly in love and they love themselves there is no fake in it the thing about love is when love gets strong love begins to invent names that gives expression is that true every husband here has names that he calls his wife when things go bad he starts calling her my wife or the name her father gave her or all kinds of things there are indices that tell you there's trouble so imagine with me for a moment a man who is not used to calling his woman darling or honey and all of a sudden he appears before people and just for the sake of his ego he now starts saying honey and she looks at him and says, when, when did this one start i'm not used to you calling me in the secret place why stand here and say lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon my jesus and we can feel the strangeness in your communication this is not your language of the secret place The place of relevance is the place of the altar. The place of relevance is the place of death. Any man you see that you truly admire the investment of the spirit upon his or her life, I can tell you, it came at the instance of death. Death to the flesh. Death to the impact, the, the influences But when you die, you get to a realm called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He says, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. Then you will see the power of God. Then you will see the grace of God. It takes more than an offering, no? to contact superior levels of God's glory. You can package a seed and we live in a generation that is obsessed with quick, quick impartation. Once people see a man of God who is anointed, people just kneel down with seeds. I'm not saying that is wrong. There is a principle there. Many times the men of God just pray so you stand up and go. Even them, they know nothing came on you. They know that if they don't pray, you will not go. You get to a point where it is no longer your agenda. I'm not just interested in making a name for myself. I'm interested in Jesus being glorified. All I want is for you. For you to be glorified. For you to be lifted. All I want is for you. For you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Prayer breaks away all those pride that came from our backgrounds. That pride, that passion to prove a point. They must know I'm a man of God. And he says, no, you cannot carry the glory this way. You will never know the tendencies within you until you go to that threshing floor in the spirit and allow prayer to be the, the system that tunes you you never know pride can be there you never know lust can be there you never know all these things are there until god vets you you cannot hold host his glory in experience do you know what it means to have access and influence to 30 billionaires and yet you have to maintain integrity and say i will never compromise to manipulate any one of them do you know what it means to carry the prophetic grace god is opening your eyes you are seeing everybody's bank account and what is there it is this lack of unfinished training that is producing the casualties we see in ministry people graduate themselves in the school of the spirit they don't wait until they are dealt with can i tell you this in the school of the spirit there are no graduates graduates are rebels we remain 
students in the school of the spirit so whilst we learn and whilst we lead others we are also students we're going to pray you must pray and say lord search my heart and try my thoughts before i disgrace and disappoint my own destiny some of you sincerely you desire power but i know the reason why the reason is because people have looked down on you and you are tired of mockery so you are hoping that god will give you power so that you quickly go back to your region and say where is the one who laughed at me yesterday ask hannah and penina for as long as hannah wanted a child to stop the mockery of penina god said that is too small a reason to give you a child but the day she said you need a prophet let my womb this is not about mockery again she prayed once and a child came prayer and fasting in the presence of god purifies your motif why do you want to host the glory of god why do you want the power of god so you sit in front so your name is on a poster so partners can come and give you millions and billions god is not a member of a political party he cannot be manipulated he's the monarch of the universe there is no good father who gives an unprepared son a car or keys to a safe an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says that he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we learning something now we need to humble ourselves and ask the lord to prune us it is not that miracle working power cannot come to you it is not that fame and influence cannot come these things were destined already in christ but not this version of you is a version of you that must die i told god anything at all anything at all that sustains the power to take your place in my life may it never come what do i need it for men and women of god please hear me as vast as we are seated here looking at me the lord is exposing our tendencies to us and saying reverend if you carry the level of glory you are praying for it may not be safe for you now so i need that pruning he that the father loves he chastens the chastening of god is proof of his love a responsible parent will chasten his child so that he will bear fruit The Lord told me something years ago and he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you if you let men see me they said Lord I have no business building a name for myself your name is greater than mine and you've given me already as an inheritance what other name will be greater I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you the truth till today until tomorrow I have no agenda to build a name for myself a reputation uh -uh. no no please take it high for me Komina na kane, Yeshua Hamashia. Komina na kane, Komina na kane, ya Yesu. Komina na kane, Komina na kane, Komina na kane. Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane Listen, you want increase in ministry? Hand over that ministry to God. Your reputation will kill you if you put it before ministry. Carry the car, carry your reputation. Put it in an alabaster box and bring it before Him. Everything. 
Lord, this competitive spirit, put it in the alabaster box. This desire for fame, put it in the alabaster box. This tendency, put it in the alabaster box. And when you get to his feet, don't pour it, break it. Break it there. And God says, you carried your fame and your reputation and you brought it to my feet. So you could go this far. Let's go to the next level of grace. When your motive is purified in the place of prayer, you can come and stand before God's people and you will not manipulate and deceive them. You see, if you have the courage to manipulate and deceive God's people, it tells you how much you are alive in yourself. That you know the prophecy you are giving is a lie. That you know that what you are saying is not God that said it. And you have the conscience to stand and actually do it. Yeshua everything take the ministry oh god i'm tired of the burden of this ministry killing me Take every, he says my yoke is easy the one you are carrying is not him that gave you he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light so if ministry is killing you someone put that burden on you we are going to have spend five minutes with God everyone just crying your heart before your maker you are saying Lord I truly desire to see the manifestation of this glory in my life take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything listen many years ago when kaduna in a conference like this and that's how this song came it was a time of consecration and repentance and opening our hearts before him and this song came listen i want you to cast your golden crown forget that you are emoji leave the issue of man of god we respect and we honor your pedigree but in the next five minutes i'd like you to find a corner and we're going to cry before the lord search my heart i desire to be mightily used by you in jalingo in taraba state father some of you are like the prodigal son come to your father in sincerity and repentance how many hired servants he said as my father and i am here feeding with the swine he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves but as the father saw him from a distance he embraced him and changed his robe Go ahead and pray. Hey man, I must say, na ma na na di. Shira da ma na 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 na. Please pray. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours. It's yours forever. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Whatever you want from me, whatever you, I surrender. Go ahead. Lay down the pride. Lay down everything. Whatever you ask of me. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Hey, la basha la dosiada. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Please pray. Pray. 
something is happening to you in this prayer you will encounter the grace and the mantle for your ministry i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your glorious majesty Ya bone na kau Sujada ni na kau Sarkin salama Sarkin aljanna Ya bone na kau Sujada ni na kau Sarkin salama Crucify my flesh before Sujada ne nakao Sarkin salama Sarkin aljana Ya bone na kau, sujada ne na kau. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Hallelujah. Just one minute. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you So you'll do what you do We need a move over Chalingo We need a move 
this is a move. We need a move. Father, we come to you with hearts broken, hearts repentant, conscious of your love. We ask for your mercy and we ask for your grace. We ask for your grace. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. For some of you, you need to return. No mountain you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Ah. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so kind to me. Listen. Listen, in the name of Jesus, 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 I know some of you are crying, but listen to me. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. There is a relationship between death and glory. It is more than preaching sermons. It is more than crusades. It is more than laying hands on the sick. It's a testament of genuine love. Prayer now becomes the platform that changes you. You evolve to that level that can host the grace for nations. The anointing for territories. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and even despised the shame. We have to round up. Please listen to me. In the name of Jesus, as you go back home and all through the remaining part of this conference, please go back again and renew your passion for the spirit of prayer and supplication. Any attack on your prayer life, any attack on fasting, it's an attack on the glory of God upon your life. God is not a herbalist. No. I've taken our time and we'll soon be wrong. We desire to see the fire of revival sweep from city to city in Jalingo. That upon every street, every church, every denomination, Every Anglican communion, fire burns upon the altar. Then your political system will begin to come under the influence of that fire. Then your economic system begins to come under the influence of that fire. Then every other aspect comes under the influence of that fire. This is how territories are changed. You don't change territories by changing territories. You change territories by changing yourself. When you are changed, the territory will look like you. The focus is not them. The focus is us. When we are changed, the territory must change. That's what Jesus did. He changed 12 men and transformed 12 men. Now the apostles of the Lamb. 
alongside others that made the 120 set the world on fire it was john wesley that said set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn let's pray father we thank you for bringing your word helping us to understand that your patterns for on your glory you have helped us and you have shown us as it was in the tabernacle of moses that your glory came and rested upon the people men and women because your patterns were kept we confess oh god that we have been careless in complying with your divine patterns you left us your word you left us the holy spirit you left us teaching priests to help us but we have not been attentive yet scripture says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my saying says do not let them depart from you they are life he says to those who find them and even health to their flesh and so father we come with hearts broken and hearts repentant show us your ways afresh spirit of the living god we honor your ministry in our lives you were sent by jesus representing the presence of the father in us and to us and with us helping us to conform in experience to the image of the christ and we pray that for many of us who are interested in that school of the spirit again start afresh with us build in us divine patterns patterns that will help us host several levels and dimensions of the glory of god and we decree and declare that through our lives and in our lives and from our lives and by our lives jesus will ever remain glorified lifted in our churches in our territories let this be so in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you